once again a good day to all of you and thank you for joining us here at St. Luke in Westport for our daily Mass. Today we observe the Wednesday of the 19th week of Ordinary Time and we are asked to pray in a special way for Jill Hart Larson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God is our Creator. God is our Redeemer. God is our Sanctifier. We place our lives humbly before the goodness and the mercy of our God. You are Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. By your will, all things came to be and were made. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are worthy to receive glory and honor and power. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom we dare to call our Father, as taught by the Holy Spirit, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord cried out for me to hear, Come, you scourges of the city. And with that I saw six, six men coming from the direction of the upper gate which faces north, each with a destroying weapon in his hand. <clears throat> in their midst was a man dressed in linen, with a writer's case at his wrist. They entered and stood beside the bronze altar. Then he called to the man dressed in linen with the writer's case at his wrist, and said to him, Pass through the city, through Jerusalem, and mark a towel on the foreheads of those who moan and groan over all the abominations that are practiced within it. To the others I heard the Lord say, Pass through the city after him and strike. Do not look on them with pity, nor show any mercy. Old men, youths, maidens, women, children, wipe them out. But do not touch any mark with the towel. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the men, the elders who were in front of the temple. Defile the temple, he said to them, and fill the courts with the slain. Then go out and strike in the city. After the glory of the Lord left the threshold of the temple and rested upon the cherubim, these lifted their wings, and I saw them rise from the earth, the wheels rising along with them. They stood at the temple of the eastern gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of God of Israel was above them. Then the cherubim lifted their wings, and the wheels went along with them, while up above them was the glory of the God of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord both now and forever. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. From the rising of the, to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord, 
above the heavens is his glory. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high, and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Alleluia. Jesus Christ. Over the past two days, with the feasts of the Deacon Lawrence and of St. Clair, uh, we have missed out on the background to this reading from Ezekiel that we heard today. And it's written in an apocalyptic style, a grand statement of punishment and woe for those who are not faithful to God and what will befall them if they separate themselves from a living relationship with God. Yesterday's reading included this part. I saw a hand stretched out to me in which was a written scroll unveiled before me. It was covered with writing front and back and written on it was lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. And Son of man, he said to me, Fill your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll I am giving you. I ate it and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he told me to go to the house of Israel and speak those words to them. Lamentation and wailing and woe. Very dark sounding reading. Today <clears throat> we hear from Matthew's Gospel this strange kind of encounter or strange instruction from Jesus that in essence would lead us to believe that it's about lamentation and wailing and woe for those who do not faithfully follow God. It seems to us very easily to be a reading in which the adversarial nature of the situation keeps getting ratcheted upward and upward and upward. Go tell your brother about his wrongdoing, but first keep it just between the two of you. Then get somebody or a couple of somebodies to go with you to try to convince him. If that doesn't convince him, then 
make it a matter for the whole church, the whole community. It's very easy to hear a rising opposition against this one who has sinned. And to a certain degree, that might be true. But I think of that line from Ezekiel that said, the lamentation and the wailing and the woe <clears throat> in the message that God gave him was something that was very sweet. What made it sweet? And I think it was the prospect of establishing or reestablishing a right relationship with God. See, I like to look on this gospel story not as a matter of increasing opposition and adversarialness, but rather an increase of loving care for the one who has gone astray. Go first to your brother, just you and him. See if he'll listen to you and see if it makes sense to him. And if it does, you have won your brother over and a right relationship with the church and with God is reestablished. What if that doesn't work? Take a couple other people to love that person even more. See if the love and the care and the concern of several people won't be the, as they call it nowadays, the intervention that helps that person turn around. Well, sometimes people are stubborn and they resist. So make it a matter for the whole church. Let the whole community of the church surround that person with loving care and concern and a heart that seeks to reconcile the person to the community and to God. Now here's the kicker at the end. What if that doesn't work? What if the love of a whole community doesn't work? Treat them as you would a tax collector or a sinner, somebody who is considered unredeemable. How about this for an understanding of that last scenario? Who did Jesus eat with? To whose houses did Jesus go for dinner? Like Matthew, the tax collector, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, so many others who were prominent, but on the edge of enmity with Jesus and what he was teaching. Ultimately, it comes down to being centered on the Lord who does the work of reconciliation when we as individuals, singly or in groups or even as a whole community, cannot achieve the reconciliation that God desires with all of us. And in that case, you love them even more. God has promised to listen to our prayers brought before him with humility. And so we ask God to hear these, our needs. <clears throat> For the church, created by divine mercy. May it never lose sight of its human frailty and the need for humility before God and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that the gifts of democracy and freedom not be abused by those in our land who control power and privilege. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exalt themselves by oppressing the weak, as well as those truly humble who know their need for God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are disheartened by suffering or who have grown weary in the struggles of this life, may they find healing and renewal in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those who have been suffering through the corona pandemic. For those who know the cruelties of starvation and war, may they find lasting joy in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for Jill Hart Larson, for whom we pray in a special way today. For all those who are ill and all who have asked our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pause to remember our personal needs. For these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, all merciful, hear us as we acknowledge our deep dependence on your mercy. Cleanse us of our sins, hear our petitions, and fill our every need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please pray with me now that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May, May the, the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross he brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join in the great hymn to your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Frank our Bishop, the clergy, and all who serve your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Make the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed. Save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.